Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by antagonistic muscle pairs. You should then be able to describe slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibres. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at muscle contraction and we've been focusing on skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are responsible for moving bones in the skeleton. To do this, skeletal muscles are attached to bones via tendons. And tendons are tough connective tissue made from the protein collagen. I'm showing you here a tendon in the leg. This connects a muscle in the calf to a bone in the foot. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that when a skeletal muscle contracts, it provides a pull force onto a bone. Muscles cannot provide a push force. So the same muscle cannot move a bone in two opposite directions. That means that muscles work in pairs to move bones. And scientists call these antagonistic muscle pairs. I'm showing you an example here. The biceps and triceps form an antagonistic muscle pair to move the forearm. To move the forearm upwards towards the shoulders, the biceps contracts and the triceps relaxes. And to move the forearm back down towards the body, the triceps contracts and the biceps relaxes. Now, muscle fibres exist in two different forms. These are called slow twitch fibres and fast twitch fibres. And the proportions of these fibres vary between different muscles. Slow twitch fibres contract relatively slowly compared to fast twitch fibres. And slow twitch fibres produce a less powerful contraction. However, slow twitch fibres can contract over a longer time period than fast twitch fibres. This means that slow twitch fibres are useful for prolonged physical activity, for example running a long distance. We tend to find a higher proportion of slow twitch fibres in muscles that contract for long periods. For example, the calf muscles in the legs, which are used for posture when we're standing. Now, because slow twitch muscle fibres contract for long periods, they carry out aerobic respiration efficiently. That's because if anaerobic respiration took place, that would produce lactic acid. And lactic acid would cause the muscle to become fatigued. So slow twitch muscle fibres are well supplied with blood vessels which carry oxygen and glucose to the muscle fibres. They also have a large number of mitochondria to carry out aerobic respiration. And slow twitch muscle fibres also contain the oxygen storage molecule myoglobin. Myoglobin has a red colour and this gives slow twitch muscle a red coloration. So the adaptations of slow twitch muscle fibres ensure that aerobic respiration can take place effectively. Fast twitch muscle fibres are adapted to produce rapid and powerful contractions. But fast twitch muscle fibres cannot contract for long periods. We find a high proportion of fast twitch muscle fibres in muscles such as the biceps and triceps in the arms. Fast twitch muscle fibres are useful in exercises such as weight training. Now, fast twitch muscle fibres have high levels of the enzymes required for anaerobic respiration. That's because anaerobic respiration can generate ATP rapidly. Fast twitch muscle fibres also have extensive glycogen stores, which can be broken down to glucose. And phosphocreatine stores within fast twitch muscles can also be used to rapidly generate ATP from ADP. Fast twitch muscle fibres also have a larger proportion of myosin filaments than slow twitch muscle, and the myosin filaments are thicker. And finally, because fast twitch muscle fibres are adapted for anaerobic respiration, they have relatively small amounts of myoglobin. This makes fast twitch muscle fibres appear less red than slow twitch muscle fibres. OK, so hopefully now you can describe antagonistic muscle pairs and slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibres. 